Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Douglas Bourne, and I'm with the Maine Fair Trade Campaign, and I'll be seeing this little event. This time last year, a half a million people mobilized for the Climate Action March in New York City. And this year, in December, world leaders will meet in Paris to negotiate a climate deal to cut carbon emissions and to stop climate disruption. Leading up to the Paris COP21, as it's known, a national day for climate action was called for today, October 14th, with over 200 events occurring across the United States right now. Coincidentally, on October 5th, after nearly five years of secret negotiations, trade ministers in Atlanta, Georgia, announced that a deal had been reached on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, also known as TPP. The TPP cannot be enacted without congressional approval. Given these October 5th and the October 15th occasions, and the consensus so far that COP21 Paris isn't going to be near enough to address climate, Maine Fair Trade and the climate mobilization have proposed more. We propose this light brigade shine a light on how the upcoming free trade deals impact climate and also what each of us can do leading up to and through Paris in order to protect the policy space needed to mitigate climate. So my name is Ezra Silk. I'm the deputy director of the Climate Mobilization, a newish uh, national campaign to restore a safe climate. We're calling for a World War II scale mobilization, conversion of the economy uh, to restore a safe climate. So this is what we are proposing. There is a pledge that I have in my hand. You can sign this pledge today and this pledge commits you to spreading it to your friends, family and to your congressional representatives. This pledge calls for the U.S. government immediately to go to zero emissions by 2025 and to remove all the excess carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere literally as quickly as possible. But I encourage you guys to sign this pledge to thank your uh, congressional representatives for saying no to fast track and to ask them to take a step forwards to ask for a World War II scale mobilization to save our climate, create full employment, and wipe out this modern day depression that we're now experiencing. Thank you very much. Next, let's pause and review some facts. Of the 29 plus chapters of the TPP, only five actually have anything to do with trade. That leaves two dirty dozen chapters that have little or nothing to do with trade. We will shine our light on three issues emerging from portions of leaked texts. These are jobs, climate, and ISDS. ISDS provisions, which stands for Investor State Dispute Settlement Provisions, allow corporations to sue countries over legislation enacted to mitigate the impact of climate. We've already seen this so-called tool given preferentially to multinational companies in action. And we point to two cases. Germany is sued by Vattenfall Incorporated. When the Fukushima nuclear power plant meltdown occurred, Germany enacted measures that will wind down nuclear power. Vattenfall has, inv has invested interest in nuclear power plants. Another case, Canada is sued by Lone Pine because Quebec voted to, in a local moratorium on fracking beneath the St. Lawrence River. Lone Pine has future intent to frack there. It is clear that the ISDS is a tool that can directly challenge the climate policy space needed by legislators to mitigate global warming. Most of the 141,936 small businesses, including some 8,100 farms in Maine, will not benefit. In fact, some will be harmed substantially. For example, after the TPP is implemented due to a flood of dried milk product from New Zealand, the global price 
of milk will fall. To give you an idea of the expectation of impact to the dairy industry, Canada has pledged $4.3 billion to offset predicted losses to its dairy industry after TPP comes into effect. Jobs. What about Maine's New Balance shoes? These jobs are on track to compete with 60 cents an hour wage earners in Vietnam, putting 900 jobs in Maine and New England at risk. Maine has been disproportionately impacted by NAFTA, a trade agreement which also incentivized offshoring, doubling down with TPP, would seem to be a pretty bad gamble for the state of Maine. Promoting Maine farms and local products at a municipal, state, and federal level is considered a barrier to trade. But the things that you can do, I'll, I'll go through this list here, the things that we can do is one, sign the Climate Mobilization Pledge. The other thing you can do is to sign the, the TPP and Climate Petition that is posted on the Maine Fair Trades website, Google Maine Fair Trade Campaign. Number three, sign and send postcards. We have some with us today. The TPP may come up as early as this spring. Maine Fair Trade is asking you to immediately contact your congressional legislature. As you know, each of Maine's congressional legislators voted against Fast Track. You can send one of our postcards to each, thanking them for their vote, and then asking them to vote against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And explain why. The TPP text is still secret, so access to the text is limited. But since the administration is asking legislators to support the TPP already, certainly public citizens can ask legislators not to support it and simultaneously ask for the text to be made public. One final quote from 350.org's executive director, May Bovey, quote, there's no question that the TPP is an absolute disaster to our climate. Thank you so much for coming. If anybody else would uh, like to make some comments, the uh, the microphone can be yours. Please uh, tell us who you are and what rep uh, what organization you represent, uh, sir. I'm, I'm Stephen Oliver. I'm with um, the board of Peace Action Maine, and um, I you know just want to say that um, that what we need to do is really drastic. We need to rebuild an economy which is based on protecting one another. Um, we need to forget about differences and remember we're all the same. We all live and breathe in, on the planet. We all need to eat. Steve, thank you very much.